My name is Jay Ram Pai. I'm a second year emergency medicine resident at Mount Sinai. This lecture, we're going to be reviewing water treatment in wilderness medicine. Making sure that your water is clean in the wild is an extremely important way to prevent any sort of illness. So let's briefly go over some of the terms you need to know. To disinfect is to remove or destroy pathogens. To sterilize is to eradicate all of the life forms possible from the water. And to purify is to clean water in order to reduce its smell, taste, or odor. Forward, we just are going to assume that any water you come across in the environment is going to be contaminated. It's therefore going to be absolutely necessary that you treat all of your water. You can never guarantee that any natural water source is clean. There's always this uh, story where you go outside, you see this clear, fast-running stream, therefore you assume it's, it's okay to drink out of that. You really have absolutely no idea of what's upstream, and making sure that you cover your bases and treating your water is extremely important. We don't need to actually purify or sterilize the water. We just need to clean it and reduce the pathogen burden enough to ensure that it's safe to drink. The risks of drinking water outside in the environment are bacteria, viruses, protozoa, and helminths. All of them present in a variety of ways. That's not something we're really going to get into in the lecture. The take-home point here is you need your water to be clean to prevent yourself from getting ill. So the things you're going to have to consider when you get your water treated is what affects whether or not you're going to get contract some sort of infection. The things that affect this are how much water you consume, how well your water is treated, and what sort of pathogens are in the water, as well as how strong those pathogens are. The immune system and the individual strength of the person drinking the water is obviously also going to come into play. Someone who's immune compromised really shouldn't be relying on these lectures as their risk for contracting infection is significantly higher. What are the different ways in which we can treat our water? These methods are all effective in a variety of manners, and they are more effective against some pathogens than others, something we're going to get into later. But it's important to remember that you need to tailor your water purification to the environment that you're in. Filtration is the separation of pathogens by passing water through several membranes of different permeability. Uh, it's possible to create these in the wild yourself uh, via things that you find, but these days there are a lot of commercial filters and we're going to go through some of them. You can use heat to boil water and the mechanism here is you get to a temperature high enough and long enough that the pathogens die off and you minimize the pathogen burden enough to make water potable. Irradiation is the use of IV light to reduce pathogen burden. Chemicals are the use of iodine or chlorine in order to directly kill pathogens. When you're doing this, the goal is to actually sterilize the water of all life forms. All of these are different than desalinization. It's, we're not going to really cover that in this lecture. Um, that is really the use of filtration, and what that does is it creates potable water out of salt water. That's a whole entire topic on its own, and unfortunately we're not going to get into that right now. This is a pretty important slide to review over on your own. What this goes over is the contaminants and their size, the risks of drinking them or contracting an illness, uh, where the original source of the contaminant is, and how the different methods that I just described work and how effective they are in treating the different illnesses. Just take some time, read over this on your own, and make sure you understand it conceptually more than anything else. Filtration. Filtration is a really good way to remove cysts and bacteria. Um, 0.2 size micron is the ideal size that you want of your filter. That increases uh, the chance of it preventing infectious organisms from passing through. As filters grow older, they often become clogged. This means that you're going to have to use higher water pressure to pass your water through the filter. What that unfortunately does, it increases the chance of your filter not providing the permeability that you need. Filtration really does not work well against viruses. They're far smaller than 0.2 microns, and you're going to have viral burden in the water that you get via filtration. Water that you've filtered, you'll often need to treat somewhat further in order to prevent any sort of viral infection. Throughout this lecture, I'm going to show you some of the commercially available methods to treat your water. Um, 
I guess it's important to remember that I do not have any financial disclosures. I'm basically just going to be going over the mainstream things on the market and uh, talking about how they work. So Sawyer water filters, uh, that's the water filter you see in the top middle of this slide. They're very, very popular. Um, it functions via filtration. You can buy them in a variety of sizes and shapes based on the amount of water you want to get. Uh, in terms of convenience, this is nice because you can often get a uh, water filter that fits on top of your camel pack. So you can use your water bladder in your backpack, drink directly out of it. It'll filter through the Sawyer and get to your mouth directly. The Life Straw is something that's become particularly popular. Uh, you basically take the uh, bottom end of the filter, you stick it directly in water, and you sip. And the uh, force generated by your suction of the water actually provides active filtration before it gets to your mouth. Hand pump filters are the most uh, time tried and tested way of filtering your water. Um, these are generally a little bit larger. Uh, they take a little bit more time. But if you're going on a longer trip and you need to ensure larger amounts of water, perhaps you have more people going with you, this is going to be the most effective thing. You can get liters upon liters of water relatively quickly. Uh, you just need to pack for it separately. That's the only thing. Heat. Heat's the oldest and nonetheless the most effective method of simple water purification. What you're doing here is you're relying on bringing water to a temperature high enough for long enough that it becomes inhospitable to the life of the infectious organisms. All of the pathogens that you're trying to prevent yourself from getting infected by have different temperatures at which they die off. All of them have a temperature far lower than the boiling point of water. For this reason, boiling water is more than enough treatment. You just need to boil it for long enough. Currently, the CDC recommends three minutes of full boiling when up over 6,500 feet. Uh, they say 6,500 feet because you have to remember, as the uh, elevation you're at increases, the boiling temperature of water is going to slightly decrease. One of the main drawbacks people have when it comes to treating their water via boiling is that particulate matter isn't really addressed. You need to do some sort of filtration, even if it's superficially, to prevent the larger contaminants from getting into your system. Irradiation. Radiation is the use of UV light to create potable water. Uh, UV light over an effective time or intensity causes enough damage to microscopic organisms that they will also die off, similar to boiling, which will increase your chance of being able to safely drink the water that you procure. As well as with other uh, systems such as heat, uh, to optimize irradiation in terms of cleaning your water, you need to make sure that you don't have any particulate matter. Um, there have been some studies done by the Wilderness Medicine Society, and it shows that you can use sunlight alone, depending on where you are. Obviously, uh, further up north or south, you're not going to get enough direct sunlight. Uh, sunlight alone can be used for six hours with sunny weather, two days in cloudy weather, and it obviously does not work in rainy or dark weather. This applies to less than two liters of water in a polyethylene bottle. The studies did not look at glass bottles. You can use aluminum to increase uh, reflection of sunlight to decrease the time. There isn't a hard and fast rule along how long that works is. Uh, sunlight, it's one of those things where you could use it in a pinch if you had to, but it takes a really long time, and it's questionable as to how effective it is for large amounts of water. Cue the SteriPen. This is the gold standard for irradiation for water treatment. It's actually such a high dose of UV light that it affects Giardia and Protozoa as well. And the SteriPen is not temperature dependent. It is going to sterilize your warm water, your room temperature water, and your cold water equally effectively. Uh, it can sterilize water in less than a minute for 16 ounces. The drawback for the SteriPen is it's battery powered, and unfortunately the battery mechanism inside the SteriPen is water sensitive. It's in a water-resistant casing, but if for any reason you crack the casing and water gets into the power source inside, you're going to be out one SteriPen. It's very, very effective, but personally I feel like there are more uh, hardy ways to take uh, water treatment. Now we're going to briefly go over chemical treatment of water. Chemical treatment of water is often done via halogenation. That is, adding iodine, chlorine, or chlorine dioxide to water in order to uh, 
kill pathogens off and create sterile water sources. This is often best done by combining your iodine and chlorine with taste neutralizing additives because chlorine and iodine both tend to affect the flavor of water very poorly. Iodine specifically uh, treatment will result in a uh, uh, precipitant at the bottom of the water that you've treated and it's important to kind of try and neutralize that and filter that out as well. Bleach is an effective way of uh, treating your water. Um, you just need to be able to do this very, very carefully. It takes a minuscule amount of bleach to treat your water, and including too much bleach can actually obviously have a lot of adverse health effects. Chemical treatment, similar to heat, is far more effective when the water has had a chance to settle. Uh, if you're unable to do that, creating a rudimentary filter also works well. Cold water uh, takes longer to treat chemically due to the diffusion of the chemicals throughout the water. Uh, and lastly, chemical treatment actually does work well against viruses, it just takes a little bit more time. Uh, overall, chemical treatment is very good at affecting all of the different pathogens you can encounter in water. So chemical treatments for water, uh, I'm just including a couple of examples here. Aquamira is a really very popular way of uh, chemically treating your water. It uses chlorine dioxide and it is a two-part treatment system. Uh, part A, which cleans the water and sterilizes it. Part B, which further cleans it as well as decreases the adverse taste from Part A. Uh, it's very popular. They come in very small bottles. It's easy to take around, and you can use it for most water sources. I also included a picture at the bottom here of those classic iodine tablets. This is probably your cheapest option in terms of chemical water treatment. Uh, just make sure you buy something to treat the water as well, because iodine-treated water, while not adverse to your health to drink is very, very poor on the taste buds. Uh, last but not least, I included a basic ratio of how much water to how much bleach. I really don't recommend using this unless you have an accurate way of gathering water and an accurate way of measuring your bleach. So that's basically it in terms of water treatment. Uh, this is a very brief overview of the different things you can do to treat your water. And more than anything, I just wanted to give you guys the different commercial options. And uh, the ones I've gone over are overall the most popular ones. In terms of figuring out what's the best one for you, I think you really need to figure out what type of trip you're going on. If you're going to be going somewhere where you know that the water is muddy uh, and it's obviously overtly contaminated with things, it might be better to get a filtration system, which you can then boil after. Uh, things you need to consider when you go on a trip how much water are you going to need to go with? Um, when you're going out uh, for the day right now in class, you're probably not going to be drinking that much water throughout the day, a liter, two liters at most, maybe some more for some of you. Um, you don't really have as much water loss throughout the day when you're not exerting yourself. When you're going on a trip, uh, if you're going for multiple days, you're going to have uh, insensible losses, you're going to have uh, heat loss to the environment, which is going to increase your water loss. You're going to have a lot of different ways in which water is pretty rapidly consumed. So your water consumption on a trip is generally going to be much higher, so you need to make sure you budget for more water. It's also going to be important to think about how many people you're going to have. Uh, one of those uh, little filter pens that I showed you, the Steri straws, that's good for a single person going on a trip to get a decent amount of water. It's not going to do well for a larger excursion. Uh, you might want to get one of those uh, old filter pumps, uh, the classic filter pumps rather, because it creates a lot more water much quicker. And lastly, you want to just remember how long are you going on this trip for, uh, because the longer you will go out for, the more you're going to want to make sure you have uh, durable and renewable ways of uh, cleaning your water. A SteriPen might not be the best thing. They have long battery lives and they work for many, many charges, but like, say you're going on a long trip and your SteriPen breaks, you're now out of a way of creating clean water. Just consider all of these things, and more than anything else, like all things in wilderness medicine, you want to just make sure you plan for prevention rather than uh, try and fix a problem.